Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome to a new study. I'll pick up on uh, numbers. And uh, so this will be a little introduction and a little bit of start to look at the, uh, start to look at the uh, organization of the, of the tribes. Okay, was a little adjustment. So, let's start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much uh, for this new study. And help me, Lord, to do it in a way that's honoring to you. Continue to help me to understand your word and to be able to uh, present it in a way that's honoring to you. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. So, number is one. We'll see if we get through the first 19 verses today. A little introduction. So we will bring up a <clears throat> and uh, let's see if uh, our first slide we will use a map. I'm going to be concentrating mostly on that part. Right about there. Right now we're in Mount Sinai. And believe it or not, we've been, that whole book of Leviticus only, took, only encompasses about uh, a month. So that's where we've been this whole time is Mount Sinai since Exodus. So really Numbers is a continuation of Exodus. So now some of the verses. Okay, so the book derives its name from the fact that it records the uh, enumeration of, the, of Israel. Historically, Numbers takes up the story where Exodus left off. It is a book of the wild, wilderness wanderings of the redeemed people, consequent upon the failure to enter the land at Kadesh Barnea. We'll get to that with the old spy thing up there when we get up, uh, up in uh, Kadesh Barnea. This was this was supposed to be basically heading into the promised land. Uh, that was the original intent, but that doesn't happen, as we'll see as we progress through numbers. Typically, it's the book of service and walk, and thus completes uh, with the preceding books a beautiful uh, moral order. The Genesis, the book of creation, and the fall, Exodus, or redemption, Leviticus, of worship and fellowship, and then numbers of that which should follow or service and walk. So it's important to see that nothing was left to self-will. Every servant was numbered, knew his place in the family, and had his own definitely assigned service. The New Testament parallel, you might want to read this if you get a chance, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, just one chapter. The second typical lesson is that tested by wilderness circumstances, Israel utterly failed. So the order uh, is, is basically broken down into five sections. The order of the host, we'll totally start looking at today. That's in Numbers 1 through 10. From Sinai to Kadesh Barnea, that's from Numbers 10 through 12. And then is, is, <coughs> Israel at Kadesh Barnea, that's Numbers 13 through 19. And then the wilderness wanderings, that's chapter 20 through 33. Then the closing instructions from chapter 33 through 36. The event actually covers in numbers a, a period of about 39 years. That was according to a man by the name of Usher. He spent a great deal of study and time trying to map out the uh, time frame of the Bible. So I get a little introduction there, and we'll start off uh, with numbers one. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt. 
So on the first day, as the tabernacle was erected on the first day of the first month in the second year of the departure from Egypt, one second, somebody's uh, blowing up my phone. So, uh, so as, as, as noted, the tabernacle was erected on the first day of the first month. And here we're starting off the second day in the second year of the, the departure from Egypt. And that was in Exodus 40, verse 17. It came to pass in the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. And this happened on the first day of the second month in the same year. It is evident that the transactions related in the preceding book must all have taken place in the space of one month and during the time the Israelites were encamped at Mount Sinai. Some other examples of this in Numbers 9.1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were coming out of the land of Egypt, saying, also in Numbers 10.11, And it came to pass on the 20th day of the second month as the second year that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. If you remember correctly, as soon as the cloud was taken up off the tabernacle, that, re that meant that uh, it was time to move. And also Exodus 40, verse 17. I'll do 1 Kings 6, 1. I already read Exodus 40, 17. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the, of the Lord. Kind of interesting that it was exactly uh, the same month of the year, the second month of the year. But they built it, uh, they broke camp for the tabernacle and it, and, it, and it arrived and Solomon's temple was beginning to be built. That's kind of interesting, a little note. <clears throat> So here we see what appears to me to be an organizing of the ranks of an army or fighting force. Remember back in Exodus how Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, suggested this type of organization to take care of judging issues within the people. Kind of a, So it sounds like Moses is going to take that to heart and use it again here. Of course, with the Lord's uh, direction too. Exodus 18, 21 through 25. Moreover, thou shalt provide... Out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and placing such over them to be rulers of the thousands, rulers of the hundreds, rulers of the fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people in all seasons. It should be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they should judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and thou shalt bear the burden with thee. If thou should do this thing, and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all the people shall also go to their place in peace. So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of Israel and made them heads over the people, rules of the thousands, rules of the hundreds, rules of the fifties, and rules of the tens. So he's going to do a similar thing here when he sets up each tribe. And he's going to put somebody in charge of each tribe for the military side of things. <clears throat> Okay, verse 2. So take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel after their families by the house house of their fathers with the numbering of their names, every male by their poles. So we're going to be counting every male. Take up the sum. No, this numbering was probably intended to illustrate the divine faithfulness and thus increasing the seed of Abraham to prepare them to preserve due order in their march and to distinguish tribes and families. That's what that picture is I, 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 you first saw when I started. This is the uh, this is the four sided of the four. Uh, actually, let me bring a different picture in here. It shows it even better. <clears throat> Let me show you this for a second. <clears throat> so this really describes 
Actually, I want to do it this way. So this describes the layout uh, that they're going to be talking about. And after he counts all the people, you notice that it, uh, if you add up the people of each tribe and how they're arranged, it, it, it produces a cross. So it basically symbolizes the cross of Christ. <clears throat> As we go through these numbers, you're going to find out that this is the order that they are set. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know how well you can see the numbers themselves, but uh, we're going to be... Uh, you notice that the uh, well, we'll talk, this is what we're going to be talking about most of the chapter one uh, is this particular picture. So let me get back in here. Some other verses on this also in Numbers 26, 2 through 4. Take the, the sum of the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and upward throughout their father's house. All that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eliezer, the priests spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Also Numbers 26, jumping down to 63 through 64. Oh, where am I? Oh, Exodus 30, verse 12. When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, thou shalt then give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, then there be no plague among them when they, they, thou numberest them. Also in Exodus 38, 26. And beckon for every man that is half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary, for every one that went to be numbered from 20 years old and upward, for 600,000 and 3,550 men. So just have other examples when they were counted. 2 Samuel 24, 1 through 3. And the, again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to say, Go, number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go now through the, all tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Bathsheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, Now the Lord thy God said, add unto the people, how may so they be, an hundredfold, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king delight in this thing? Actually, this was a negative thing that uh, ended up uh, getting David in trouble, because he wasn't supposed to number him then. So now that's a good example. You should always follow the Lord and not do things on your own. Also, First Chronicles 21, 1 and 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Second Samuel 24, 4. Oh, okay. Not for saying the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captain of the host, and Joab and the captain of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And then now, First Chronicles 21, 1 and 2. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. This is when he, uh, he did it without God's. Uh, and David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Bathsheba even to Dan and bring the number to that to me that I may know it. This is the one... Uh, this is just an example. It was actually Satan that told him. I think this is a good example to be sure we're doing something that's honoring to the Lord, and it's under his guidance, not under uh, our own will or something like that. So now, jump into verse 3. So from 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, Thou and thy Aaron shall number them by their armies. So by their armies. Some other examples in Numbers 33, 1. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. Exodus 20, 17. Ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in the selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. 
Therefore, I shall ye observe this day in your generations for, by an ordinance forever. Also, verse 51 in chapter 12. It came to pass that self same day, the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. And also Psalms 105, 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. So we're getting ready, to, the, the army's ready to take over the land of Israel. That was the whole intent here. So basically we're kind of in a, uh, we're, first we're getting organized here into an army, a fighting force. And then during this travel period, I'm sure that uh, uh, Moses is going to be given instruction as to uh, how things are going to work out. So the first thing he's doing is organizing. And this is exactly the same thing when it comes to how an army is set up uh, in the military. Maybe this is where they even got the example from. You'd be surprised how many things actually came from the Bible that are used and used today. Okay, back to Numbers, verse 4. And with you there shall be a man for every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you of the tribe of Reuben, Eleazar, the son of Shadur. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go through a list of people. And I know this can sound somewhat boring, uh, but I think it's interesting to, to think about what these names mean. Uh, anytime you're dealing with the Bible, names have meaning. Yeah, and particularly yeah, Hebrew names all have meaning. And, they, and, and, I, and I truly believe that they're in there. And the names are mentioned in a certain order sometimes. I wanted to tell a story, a hidden story. <clears throat> so let's take a look at this first one. So this is the tribe of Reuben. Reuben is over here. He's the oldest of the uh, of the uh, sons. And Reuben, uh, Reuben's name actually means, means behold, a son. And he's got, and now realize that uh, Reuben is already dead by now. Uh, these tribes were designed way back in Jacob's day. That was 400 years ago. But the tribal names never change. But now that Moses is going to put somebody in charge of each tribe. And you're going to see uh, that the names that follow is going to be uh, who's put in charge of each one of these tribes. <clears throat> so here we got Eleazar, the son of Shadur. Eleazar means my God is a rock. And Shadur, the mighty one, is light, spreading of the light. Verse 6. Simeon. Simeon, Shalomo of us, uh, the son of uh, Zeredai. So Simeon, hearken, and Simeon means hearkening or hearing. And Shemil, my friend is God, at peace with God, or friend of God. And uh, Shalidai, my rock is a mighty one. <laughs> Verse 7, Judah. Now, Judah means praised. Of course, that's the one that uh, our Lord Jesus came from, that tribe there. Nashon means serpent and diligent observer. They didn't have a meaning for uh, Amimadad uh, that I could find. Verse 8, Issachar. Issachar is a... Uh, uh, he brings wages or he's hired, a uh, hired. And Nathaniel, given by God, and Zor, smallness and restraint. So that's Nathan, the son of Zer. We're going to see these names again as we go through numbers, too. So Zebulon, Elad, the son of Helon. Zebulon means habitation or dwelling. Uh, Elab is my God is father. And Helon is strong. Verse 10, Joseph. Joseph means God, God shall add another son. And so, so it also means adding. Because he ended up having two sons that were adopted by Jacob, Eph, uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. So here we can actually see them spelled out. Ephraim means double land or, double, or twin land. Uh, and, and Elishamai is going to be in charge of that tribe, meaning my God hath heard. And Amimahad. Uh, my people is, honor, is honorable. Manasseh means causing to forget, one who forgets. Sounds like me. And Gamil, uh, my rewarder is God. He's going to be in charge of that tribe. And Pegazar 
as his father, the ransom of the rock God delivers. Verse 11, of Benjamin, Abadan, the son of Gideon. Benjamin means son of thy right hand. Abadan is my father is judge, and Gideon, the, the cutter down, warlike. Verse 12, Dan, Ahaz, the son of uh, M.A. Ashadai. Okay, Dan means judging, a judge. And Ahaz, uh, my brother is a help, and M.A. Ashadai. My people is mighty, people of the Almighty. Verse 13, of Asher. Asher is uh, the name of the uh, tribe. It means happy. And, he, and Pagel, the son of Okran, is going to be put in charge. Pagel means he who meeteth me is God, or an event of God. And Okran, the troubler of the troubler, afflicted. Then Gad, Gad means troop, Eliasep, i.e. my God's gatherings, protector. And the son of Duel, this name you'll see it written two different ways, Duel or Ruel. And so I just wanted to mention the slight difference in their names. Duel means known of God or invocation of God. And Ruel means a friend of God. So we'd see Duel in this chapter, and we see it in Numbers 2.14, and Ruel, uh, we see it, uh, let me just bring that up. I have to put it in here. And the tribe of Gad, and the, and the captain of the sons of Gad shall be Elias, the son of Ruel. So you can see there it uses the term Ruel. But in Numbers 2, 4, uh, 742, On the sixth day, Elisai, the son of Duel, prince of the children of Gad. See, uh, the, still the part of the, uh, he's still the prince. In fact, all of these are called princes of the children of Gad. Also in Numbers 747. And for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of first year. This was the offering of Elisai, the son of Duel. And Numbers 1020 also. And over the host of the tribe of the, the children of Gad was Elas, the son of Duel. So also note that uh, it might be because the, 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 the Hebrew spelling of this name is so close. One looks a little, a little bit like a, uh, a one-sided T, and the other one looks like a little bit like a back-sided R. So that the, let, the, the letters look very, very alike. They might be easily mistaken for each other, and hence the, the person being called both Duel and Ruel may be easily accounted for. The Septuagint and the Syriac have Ruel in this chapter, and in Numbers 2.14, which we already read, the Samaritan, Vulgate, and Arabic have Duel instead of Ruel, which, with which reading a vast number of manuscripts concur, and which is also supported by Numbers 7.42 and Numbers 10.20. We may therefore safely conclude that Duel and not Ruel was the original reading. Okay, verse 15. Naphtali. Naphtali means by strife or wrestling. And then Ahira, the son of Enan. Ahira, my brother is evil, brother of evil. And Enan having eyes, great fountains. Verse 16. They were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. The renowned. That literally means the call of the congregation, those who are summoned by name to attend. And using that brings a amount of respect and, and, uh, and honor when you're actually called by name. And I have a funny feeling the parallel to this is when, when we hear the rapture, I believe we'll actually hear our name called directly. Some verses on this in Numbers 7-2. That the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of his tribes, and were over them that were numbered, offered. Also in 1 Chronicles 
Furthermore, over the tribes of Israel, the ruler of Reubenites was Eleazar, the son of Zechariah of the Simonites, and Shebeth, the son of Magshai. Also, verse 22, of Dan, Azrael, the son of Jehoam, these were the princes of the tribes of Israel. It's kind of an interesting reference over in John 10.3. To him the porter oweth and, to, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. That's what I was talking about. That day of the, uh, talking about the good shepherd, and the shepherd being Jesus Christ. Okay, I mentioned heads of thousands. Some verses on that. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. Jump to verse 25. And Moses chose Abel men out of all Israel and made them rulers of the thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. <coughs> interesting terms too, kind of interesting that typically in a military unit as the smallest of the military units is a uh, is a uh, battery, a battery uh, or a company, and that's usually around 50, 50 men, and then hundreds would be uh, uh, the next step up from that, and then the next step up from that was uh, be thousands even to this day, because typically there's three to five uh, companies per b battalion, so the hundreds would be to battalion, so it'd be anywhere from uh, 150 to 250. And then if you uh, if you typically there's three to five battalions to a uh, to a division I mean to a brigade so that would be somewhere would be that would be in the thousands kind of interesting that it kind of plays out the same way also in Deuteronomy 115 so I took the chief of your tribes wise men and known and made them heads over you captains over thousands captains over hundreds captains over fifties and captains over tens and officers among you, among the tribe. And Micah 3, 9. Hear this, I pray ye, heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel, that abhor, abhor judgment and pervert all iniquity. Micah 5, 2. But thou Bethlehem, uh, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. That's speaking of the birth of Christ. In that little lonely Bethlehem. So just because you may be small uh, now in nature, that may prove to be uh, a, quite a blessing when we get, if you're dedicated to whatever the Lord has given you to do, no matter what it is, that uh, if, you, if, you, if you do your very best at it, that when you get to heaven, you may get uh, tenfold. Uh, you may get a really important job based on uh, the Lord's uh, the faithful service to him. Okay, back to Numbers, verse 17. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which were are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared that pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers, according to the number of their names from 20 years old and upward by their poles. And the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. You can see they're still in the wilderness of Sinai. So encampment of the tribes, uh, with the military census complete, uh, we had, in chapter one, we kind of get a, got a brief understanding there. First, he put some men in charge. The next part of the chapter, we'll be talking about the actual numbers of each tribe. Instructions for the organization of the tribes and their armies are given. The camp is organized with three tribes on each side of the tabernacle, with Yahweh's dwelling place in the midst of the camp. Further, they were, when they break camp in March, the six tribes on the east East and south, there's always these three and these three, set out first, followed by the Levites, which are traveling, uh, 
the Levites were actually around the tabernacle. So it kind of included with the tabernacle. And anyway, this is mentioned in Numbers 2.17. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward from the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp as they encamp. So shall they set forward every man his place by their standards. So these will be the two first tribes that head out. And they saw a procession out. It's interesting there's a, that even to this day, when in, in, uh, in the, uh, the commands that they uh, use to uh, start a troop, troop movement uh, is that they, uh, they typically start on the right-hand side of a, of a uh, group of people first. And it's interesting that uh, you got the forward and the right going out first. Followed by the six tribes on the west and the north, respectfully. Whether encamped or on the march, the tabernacle is central. So in other words, the tabernacle will be in between six tribes to the front and six tribes to the back. One tribe is given priority among the three on each side for the tabernacle. So, so they basically made these ranks, and they gave the ranks names. So you notice here that the names are, are in gold right next to it. So these three, even though it's Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, this is called the Camp of Judah. Right up here, the one to the north, you got Napatili, Asher, and Dan. They actually called this the Troop of Dan. This will be the second row, uh, rank down here to the south. And in it, they got the uh, Reuben and uh, Simeon and Gad. So, uh, where was I? So one tribe is given pride among the three on each side of the town. Now, Judea on the east, we see that in verse 2-9. They were numbered in the camp of Judea with 100,000 and fourscore thousand and 6,000 and 400. Throughout their armies, these shall first set forth. So Judah heads out first. And Reuben on the south, in Numbers 2.16, and that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were 100,050, 1,450 throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. So Reuben be in the second rank, which will be down here in the south, like I mentioned before. Ephraim on the west will be next, Numbers 2.24. That they were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were a hundred thousand and eight thousand and a hundred throughout their armies. And they shall go forward in the third rank. And Dan on the north, that'll be the la last one. And that they were numbered in the camp of Dan were a hundred thousand and fifty and seven hundred thousand and seven hundred. They shall go hindermost with their standards. So they're, they're picking up the rear. So that's what I had for today, and uh, that'll be a good start, uh, and we will continue with this organization of the armies, and then to the, uh, getting ready to march off and head towards the promised land. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much for helping me to get through uh, uh, this introduction, and help me, Lord, to, to uh, uh, be able to uh, show uh, how these all tie together and, and, and why they're in, even in the Bible. Help me to see exactly why these uh, you had these placed in the Bible. We give you all the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we will talk again tomorrow. And welcome to our new number study.